Hey everybody, Nina here of She Knows SEO, and today I'm going to teach you how to create a staging site with Lyrical Host. If you're not sure what a staging site is, basically it's a clone of your site. So it's kind of like we're making a twin, but then we're going to do some like scientific experiments on the twin. So like that's where the metaphor quickly falls apart. <laughs> so in Lyrical, all you have to do is open up your cPanel. Now cPanel is, it exists with like every host and there's gonna be different ways to access it. With Lyrical Host, it is literally in the menu bar that you can just click cPanel and then go to it. <laughs> so you're gonna get here and you're gonna see all this stuff about your site. And luckily, it's very much in the first bar. So here we're gonna to go to staging and just click into it and this is where we're gonna start creating a staging site. Now, I already created one um, a second ago and then I realized I should have recorded it for y'all. Um, so we're actually gonna create a new one. So I'm going to delete the current one because I just don't need it. So we're going to get rid of it and then I'll show you what it looks like brand new. So this is what it's going to look like when you first arrive. It's going to have all this information on URLs, FTP and my, I've always said like my squirrel in my head, but I'm realizing that's not what I should say out loud, um, that it might be slower. And this is because like it's not live, like we're experimenting on it. So it's not the place where you're going to do speed tests and stuff, or if you do it, you at least need to get a baseline of it first and then you can compare it later. That way you know, okay, maybe your real site is three seconds, but on the staging site it's six or something. So then if you change stuff, just like have it and then you'll know that, okay, it's more equal. And then um, it's going to be staging is gonna be the subdomain for it. Um, so you can only have one staging site at a time. Now here we're gonna decide, are we cloning live into staging or making a brand new WordPress? The most common is going to be that we're cloning what already exists on our site. So whatever your site is, as it is now, you're going to clone it and make a duplicate. And it's going to have all the files, all like absolutely everything will be the same. Or you can create a brand new thing. Typically, you just need to clone live into staging because you actually want all those files. So one of the biggest and most common use cases for this is when you're creating a duplicate of your site so you can change the theme. So if you're changing your theme from like Elementor to Cadence or Divi to Generate Press or something, you're going to want to take a minute, maybe even like a week to go through and change everything over because going from a short form builder to a block editor, there's going to be a lot of pieces that might be missing. Now, even if you're just doing a little change, I'm actually uh, right now working on this site doing a shift from Cadence to Generate Press because I've never used it and I want to try it out. Um, but even that, it's going to take me a minute because like I've never used this theme before. I have ADHD, I get distracted, I tend to walk away from a project once it's 70% complete and I don't want that showing to my audience. So that's why I'm going to want to clone the live into the staging so everything stays and I can adjust it. Now doing the default WordPress, that to me is more if you just want a subdomain and then I would just go make a subdomain. But I guess you could do it if you are just like starting brand new and you don't really care about burning everything to the ground. <laughs> I'm sure there's other use cases, but those are the ones I can think of. So we're going to clone line to, live to staging and then click create staging site. Now this site of mine is one of my baby sites. It has like five posts on it. It's not really a thing. Um, so there's not a lot happening with it. So that means it doesn't take very long to do this. Uh, the last time I ran this, it took a minute and a half. It might take a bit longer. Um, I'll pause, so don't worry, we won't be here this long, but it doesn't take a long time if it's a smaller site. The more stuff you have on it, remember that it's having to duplicate your entire site. So if you have 5,000 posts, it's gonna take a while because <laughs> it's gotta clone all that stuff. Um, now, also I wanna just say while it's doing this, we do not want to keep the staging site once we're done. A staging site is for us to do our tests, adjust things, shift things over, and then we want to get rid of it because the problem is all of this is still being hosted in your database. So when I used to be with Bluehost, who is a, a host that I do not recommend, I really don't like them, um, I would have, I don't know, you don't get that much memory with it, but let's just say you get like a gigabyte of memory. If your main database is 500 megabytes, then duplicating that, and it's not quite double, but it, it can get close once you're playing with stuff and messing stuff around. Um, but let's say it becomes like 800 megabytes. The more stuff on your database, typically the slower it gets. There's tons of issues there. So we want to be really, really careful. Um, so I caution against keeping this once you're done. Once, there you go. See, it didn't take long at all. Um, that was a couple, like that was a minute and a half, maybe. Not even, I think that was like a minute, 10 seconds. Uh, it doesn't take very long. But we want to delete the staging site when we're done. 
So I usually leave it for about a week just to make sure there's not some weird glitch that I missed just in case. Um, unless it's a site, again, if your site has 5,000 things, just be really certain immediately and try to get rid of the staging site. Um, but yeah, this is how you would do it. Then if you want to visit your staging site, you would just go here. But typically it'd be like um, staging.yoururl, so like staging.sheknowsseo.co slash and then whatever your login area is, like if it's WP admin, if it's a custom one, whatever you have to log in there. Um, and it'll be the same like username and stuff as your usual site. But if you hit visit staging, you'll see that it's just exactly your site as is. Um, and then you just need to play around with it and adjust stuff. Now, when you're ready to make it live, what you're gonna do is, this is your clone over here. So you wanna come over here and overwrite the existing data that's on your live website. So you're going from the clone and then migrating it to the live. So when you're finished making your adjustments in the staging area and you're done building this site, you're just gonna push that to the live area. So it's gonna get rid of that subdomain that says staging and it'll just make it sheknowsseo.co, good, done, ready to go. Um, so do this when you're ready for sure. And I would always recommend taking a backup before you do this. I use the free Updraft Plus plugin for this, um, but then I back it up to a Google Drive. Super simple, if y'all need help with that, let me know and I can record a video, but that's all you have to do. And then you have a backup just in case something breaks. I have not had that happen personally. I've been quite fortunate, but you never know. Tech is weird, stuff happens. So then you would clone to live and then you're just gonna have the site basically move over. So anything you did on this back end is going to exist on the new one. Now, the only thing that won't remove the subdomain is if you added links. So for example, if you start adding internal links in the staging area, they're still gonna have staging dot whatever. And then when you delete that, it's gonna be a broken link. So I recommend not changing your menu, not trying to add extra internal links and stuff in the staging area, unless you're adding them and being careful to remove that staging thing. So like for example, um, in one of my old sites, when I was first ever using a staging area, I didn't know that was a thing. So in my menu bar, um, I changed out like my about page, let's say to a new URL. I think it might've been my contact page. And then it said like staging.sheknowsseo.co slash about, even when I made it live. Deleted the staging area and then it linked to nothing. <laughs> so it was a, a big problem. So just be careful with things like that. Um, it doesn't, typically you're just changing like the overall look of the site and more like you're kind of trying to basically just like migrate the structure of posts and colors and things like that. If you actually want to change more of like the overall architecture, um, just be mindful to remove that subdomain bit and then you should be fine. And then you'll have your site live, pretty, you didn't break anything, your users didn't experience a ton of broken time on your page, um, especially like if you're like me and it does take a little bit, then you might have like eight days where your site is just a mess or you're trying to cram it all into like five hours in the middle of the night so you're like not messing up your audience, but then you're messing up your life, so not super fun. This is a super simple method that will easily allow you to create a staging area so that you can change whatever you need to change on your site, make sure nothing's broken, test it, make it live, and then you are good to go. Now this is separate from creating a subdomain for something like a WooCommerce store. Um, it is separate from making subdomains for like, like for example, anyone who sells like blog themes, usually they have a subdomain that'll be like theme one dot whatever the company is so you can see a test version of that, that theme running because we can't have eight themes running concurrently on a website. Um, sometimes they just buy a bunch of domains, but I wouldn't do that personally. So that just gives, uh, that gives like a separate entity. I think of that more like a fraternal twin and this is like an identical twin. It's an identical twin that we are then Frankensteining into something new. And again, the analogy falls apart and gets quite macabre. So <laughs> I need to stay away from that analogy, but it's the only one I can think of. <laughs> So this is a quick, quick, simple method to help you change themes, um, readjust things on your site and just move things around as needed. Uh, it's not meant to be something that you do every day. <laughs> if you're changing your theme every day, you probably need to sit down and have some talks with a therapist because you've got something happening inside <laughs> or you absolutely hate every theme and then maybe you need to think about, think critically before you buy a new one. <laughs> So I hope this was super helpful to y'all. Um, if you have any other questions, let me know in the comments. Uh, super happy to help with any issues you have. And if you enjoyed this, please like and subscribe for more helpful tips with running your blog. Okay, have a lovely day. Bye.